You know, we all face the problems of data leakage, malware, unauthorized software usage, and unauthorized network access. Um, study after study shows that most organizations are affected by uh, some sort of uh, incident in, in one of these areas. And that's just the known incidents. What we don't know uh, is, is an even bigger problem. You know, the, the, the thing is, most organizations don't have the right controls, they don't have enough human resources in place to know that this stuff is occurring. Um, and, and, you know, making the problem worse, once uh, digital information gets out, once these, you know, these electronic assets uh, get away from the network, get off the network in an unauthorized fashion, there's no way to get them back. They're gone forever. Here's some interesting uh, stats. In 2007 alone, Boeing lost 320,000 sensitive files to a disgruntled employee. Fidelity National Information Services had a DBA to sell personal information of 2.3 million consumers. And a professor at Texas A&M Corpus Christi compromised the sensitive information of 8,000 students when he lost a flash drive when he was vacationing in Madagascar. I don't know about you, but when I'm vacationing, especially if I'm in Madagascar, the last thing I want to do is worry about that much information uh, being around and having to fool with it while I'm there. Okay, so the, the, the stories are endless. If, if you're curious to, to get more uh, stories like this, uh, or, or you're trying to build a case for, for bigger and better endpoint security, check out privacyrights.org. They have what's called a chronology of data breaches, and it's, it's an actually uh, unbelievable uh, list of, of incidents that are occurring on literally a daily basis. Big, huge, visible incidents all across the, uh, the country. Well, getting back to data protection, Endpoint security technologies can help in all of these areas. So let's take a look at uh, some major areas of concern. So data protection in this context, you know, it, it's something that's been easy to overlook in the past, but now we've got this whole new mindset, this whole new slew of threats and, and means for, for, for uh, systems to be uh, taken advantage of um, that are creating these business risks. And this stuff knows no boundaries. You know, I, and, and I, I truly believe the problem is worse than we think it is. You know, we, we hear about these reported incidents and whatnot, but I really do think that that's the tip of the iceberg. Again, the side effect of information overload and uh, information security and IT staff trying to juggle too many things. The, the, the things that I see here are data at rest. You know, data is at rest most of the time, and that's where it's most vulnerable. There's been a lot of focus on, well, we've got to use SSL or TLS or VPNs to secure this data going across the wire. The thing is, that data is going across the wire maybe 1% of the time. Any given data set, maybe 1% of the time. That's probably high. The thing is, the data is at rest, and it's scattered across just thousands and thousands of files, maybe even millions of files across the enterprise, and nobody knows where it's at. You know, we've, we've got these uh, porous networks. We've, you know, pe people are picking, uh, t taking their, their laptops out. Uh, they're, they're, they're connecting in uh, all the, these flash drives and things like that. And there's no way to keep up with it all. There's just no way. And the thing is, you know, we, we have this issue associated with trusted users. Just because somebody was hired, just because they had good uh, 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 references, they seem to be a good worker, they passed their background checks or whatever, it doesn't mean that they're not going to do bad things on your network. And adding to all this is the general lack of data classification. You know, a lot of organizations still haven't started a, a data classification program because it's too complex. Even though a lot of regulations require it, people just haven't been able to get their, their hands around it. And uh, also contributing to this issue is that most of these vulnerabilities fall outside of the scope of security assessments and especially these uh, checklist audits. So you're at risk today and th these are uh, some issues that, that you've got to be paying attention to. Let me share with you a, a few things that I've come across. On this slide here, I, I used a uh, network vulnerability scanner to just go out and look at open shares on the network. This is just open Windows shares uh, that anybody can, can access. And you can see there, I came across one called Personnel. Well, that, that sounds interesting. It sounds like it may have some juicy stuff in it. So let's get in and, and poke around in that a little bit further. So on, the, on, on this slide, uh, what I have here is 
a, a file search utility. Th this is one uh, that, that I've been using for a while called Effective File Search, but you, you could use Windows Explorer, you can use whatever search utility you want to, and just go in and look for certain shares and search uh, keywords like DOB or SSN or license or anything that you think may signify sensitive information. So uh, uh, all it takes is a user going in, connecting to that share, seeing uh, what's there, and oh, look, lo and behold, there's uh, some job applications it looks like, uh, maybe some employment inquiries, uh, retiree info spreadsheet. Hmm, that uh, looks like some good information that could uh, ha have some value, right? And now on, on this next slide, um, sneaking files out via Bluetooth, via um, you know, smartphones, PDAs, whatever uh, type of device. Um, it's, all, all this stuff is, is just as easy. And, and this, this is an example of a, of a uh, file copying, you know, basically how, how a user can just right click on one of these files and send it to a Bluetooth device or send it to the, the, you know, the, sm the smartphone that's connected through USB, whatever. And as long as the mobile device has enough memory, practically anything can be taken off the network. And again, no one would ever know about it. Not good for business. So let's talk about USB and uh, other media. Obviously, USB is a, a, a big focus right now. You know, the, the, the stats say it all. Look at privacyrights.org uh, uh, stories. Read uh, any story on, on, on most of the uh, tech target sites, especially the security sites. And you'll see that, that USB is, is, has been a big focus. How do you disable USB? USB? Do you weld the, the ports shut on the computer? Do you buy the computers without USB ports, whatever? Um, it's a big problem. The issue is that information is sprouting legs. You know, it's the, these little USB drives are uh, easy to carry. They're easy to, to uh, hide. And uh, they, they hold a lot of stuff, you know, several gigabytes worth of information. They're also a means for transporting malware. Uh, there, there is a worm called the Silly FD that transported itself uh, through uh, flash drives and then loaded it itself up in mem memory on the uh, local systems. Uh, McDonald's even gave away some MP3 players over in uh, Japan, and they were infected with a, a Trojan horse. You know, this is a problem with rogue and curious insiders, but don't forget about the outsiders as well. You know, I mentioned the, the contractors and whatnot. You've got consultants coming and going. You've got auditors coming and going. So they, they are, are, are just, as, um, just as much of a threat especially when they're using their own system and you may not uh, be able to have uh, endpoint control uh, on, on their devices and actually enforce your policies. And here's one more example of insider abuse. In, in this case, it's a rudimentary way of detecting it. So what's going on in this slide is something that I see all the time when performing security assessments. That is connecting a network analyzer just inside the firewall and seeing what traffic is just flowing through. I'm not talking about capturing every packet. I'm just talking about looking at the, the overall communication sessions. See what protocols are in use, seeing who your top talkers are. And in this particular screenshot, I've discovered some questionable protocols leaving a specific host. Uh, you can see POP3S, which is the POP3 email protocol that uses SSL, uh, AOL Instant Messenger, and SSH. And I knew that these three protocols should not have been leaving this particular host in this particular environment. So this is a great way of just seeing that there is a problem. So data protection is about granular control. It's looking at everything, uh, accessing or attempting to access your systems and your environment and then controlling it in real time. You know, it helps solve all these detection and enforcement problems that we've had uh, over the years. And, you know, it, it can actually monitor and stop all this information abuse. It can uh, control uh, good applications or known good applications and, uh, and devices uh, through um, a means uh, known as whitelisting. Uh, it can help with malware protection, prevent certain uh, executables from loading up on the system. It provides strong audit trails. You know, you've, you've got the system locked down and you have proof that it's locked down and you've got proof of what's actually occurred. Uh, over uh, any given time period. It can obviously decrease uh, legal liabilities and compliance concerns, and, and it serves as an excellent final layer of protection.